Hi, uh, I'm going to explain to you uh, a little project uh, put together, which is called the MIDI Side Chainer, um, and I'm currently using it to control uh, Lion 6 Helix. Um, you can see the, the config on the screen. Um, I'm just going to explain a little bit about what it does and uh, some of the things you can do with it. Okay, so first of all, what is side chaining? Um, side chaining is where you take the signal from one part of your sort of setup uh, and you apply that to another part of the setup. Um, it's used a lot in modern audio production. Um, typically, an example would be in sort of electronic production where you have the kick drum in um, sort of house music or dance music, um, and every time the the level of the kick goes up, i.e., every hit, um, the the volume of the rest of the music uh, is subtly dropped down, which gives a sort of pumping effect. That's called side chain compression. Um, it means the kick can cut through the rest of the mix, but without actually being changed sonically itself. Um, but we can apply it to other things, and you do see guitarists using uh, similar kind of techniques. For example, an auto wah is where the the attack, the volume of the uh, the guitar that you play, affects the position of the bandpass filter, um, which simulates uh, someone moving a wah pedal uh, in sync with them playing. It's kind of a different effect to a normal wah pedal, um, but it's one that became quite popular at some point in, uh, in music history. Um, with a combination of this app, the MIDI Sidechainer, uh, and the Line 6 Helix uh, MIDI automation, um, we can come up with some kind of weird uh, guitar effects. And you kind of have to struggle to make these useful, um, but it's, it's quite entertaining. Um, so I just thought I'd give you a demo. Okay, so first up, a bit about the, the app. What you can see on the, uh, the left-hand side of the screen is uh, the app running. Uh, if I play something on the guitar, um, you see shooting up is a black line and a green line. So the black line there represents the uh, volume of the audio. <laughs> and the green line represents um, a MIDI control signal that's being sent out. Um, they're not exactly the same, and the parameters that you can see on the screen, these sliders, they basically affect the relationship between the black line, the, the audio that's going in, uh, and the green line, the, um, the MIDI that's going out the other side. For example, if you uh, turn up quantize, um, what that's going to do is mean that there's a a limited range of output values that the, the MIDI control can take on. So that's going to appear as more of like a stepped pattern than if it was uh, continuous. So you can kind of see that um, in this graph. Um, filter is a way of basically low pass filtering the MIDI signal. Um, this means that Essentially, you cut out the high frequencies, which means it can't change really fast. Um, this is kind of nice because you don't really want, um, generally, like your signal to just bounce all over the place. So just having uh, it on a really high value it means even if you play something, like it takes a long time for that MIDI signal controller to go up and a long time for it to come back down again. So you see an impulse pretty much on the black line and a, and a filtered impulse um, response in the green line. Um, whereas if you have no filter at all, you can see the green lines and the black lines pretty much coincide with each other. So you can see on the right in the, the Helix um, kind of window, you can see the position of this wire pedal. Uh, it, it's currently at 0%, but as I play, you see it bouncing up and down. Um, I've got a bunch of other effects uh, turned on at the moment as well. I'll go through each of them um, in turn. But um, just with the wah, um, let me turn everything else off. Just with the wah, you can kind of hear the louder I play, the more uh, band pass uh, there is. Um, so yeah, if you put quantize to be high,
It means there's only a few different values the warp position can be, and so you hear that manifesting itself as a stepped kind of sound. Um, another control that is on here is, is delay, which has a fairly straightforward uh, explanation. It just delays the MIDI response. Um, this can be quite handy because it means you can play something and it can cut through without any MIDI controllers. Uh, and then the MIDI control kicks in. Second. So that's what filter does, that's what delay does, that's what quantize does. Um, gain just lets you set for your guitar and your audio interface. You know what range are you going to be if I, if the gain's really low um, you see maximum volume will still only have a small effect on the output um, and then sample rate is the last one so that that's basically how often we send a command uh, to the helix so we can slow it down massively and that, that can be kind of interesting it's kind of similar to quantize um, but if you're playing fast, it just means you're going to only sample it every half a second or whatever. And you can turn it right up to a quarter of a uh, 25 thousandths of a second, I guess. Um, but the Helix does get kind of unhappy uh, if you do that. Uh, it does work, but you suddenly start seeing it start to drop messages on the floor. Um, and it sometimes freezes completely. So be careful with that. 100 milliseconds, 120 seems fine um, for most for most things. And the the latency, you can't really notice it. Um, okay, so auto wire, fairly straightforward. You understand, everyone understands kind of what that does. So basically we've recreated auto wire. Um, not that interesting. Um, one of the first things I, I tried was uh, applying the side chaining to a distortion pedal. So picking a DS1, um, basically the louder you play, the more distortion there is. The quieter you play, uh, the less distortion there is. The only thing is it also drops the level in accordance with how much drive is put on, which means that the output is basically the same level, whatever. So all you're doing really is changing the tone, changing the, the characteristics of the sound. You're not changing the volume of it too much. Um, so that's kind of kind of an interesting thing. It's similar to how like maybe an old valve amp kind of reacts, um, kind of saturating. So you hear if I play quietly. this to be one of the more useful um, kind of features. Um, okay, so, so that's fairly straightforward. You can also use it for very, um, very weird things. For example, um, you can modify the delay length. Um, so I don't know if, you, if you've ever if you've ever flipped around with the, the time parameter of a delay while you've got something go through the delay, you hear this kind of Doppler effecty kind of um, situation where as the delay length changes, it actually changes the pitch of what's going on, and that's kind of what makes up uh, some of the kind of modulationy type effects like flanger um, and things like that. So modifying the time with the side chainer is turns into a pitch uh, kind of shifter uh, in the kind of delay space which I'm sure you can find it useful um, what about pitch itself I mean my favorite of all of the effects I guess is a, is a whammy um, but on its own, this can sound super weird. So, 
if we put a long filter on, so it's, it's going to mainly slowly go up, slowly go down, uh, you can kind of get a feel for what it's going to do. If you play a single note, it's just going to pitch it up, and it's going to pitch it down. So that's kind of weird. And then um, I should stop saying kind of weird. Everything's kind of weird. Uh, you could do something like set the quantize level. So if we set the quantize to 12, that means there's 12 different steps. Um, we've got the whammy set to zero to plus 12 pitch, which means that given 12 positions and equal temperament scales, we should be a semitone uh, per interval. But I'm not sure that's the case. How consistent are you at picking? Can you use that to control pitch in a useful way? Hmm, maybe. I guess maybe uh, using a controller which is set to a set of pitches is kind of um, kind of nicer. So in this, we've got the twin harmony um, set to A minor pentatonic, and the two voices. One is going to shift upwards, and one is going to shift downwards. The louder we get. Um, so. Uh, we don't need to quantize that. A little bit of filtering is probably quite handy. So, there's our A. So the modulation is actually pretty nice in this case. I just put a a little backing track down. Like the louder you play. Um, so the last one is uh, applying modulation uh, from the side chainer to your stereo position. Uh, so you hear the, the sound bounce from left to right as you change. And then um, another thing you can do, which isn't really so much a guitar effect, um, but it's still quite handy, is uh, if you have a return coming through the helix. So, for example, here I've got a synth, um, the Novation circuit, going in the return to the synth. We can duck the volume of the return as the volume of the guitar goes up. So. <laughs> We've got a nice loud synth, and then it ducks 